Lovely to see you, mate. Pleasure as always. Should we go? It's been two years, right? Should we start? Let's go. Guys, today on the podcast, joining me, James Ison. Should we say the man behind the rich kids of the internet? Because when we first met two years ago, yeah. it was a bit of a, no one really knew. Yeah, uh, a lot. I was going to say I've come out, but that's not the right, that's not the right, <laughs> that's not the right phrase, is it? Um, We're no, ju- no one's judging. No one's judging, no. So, uh, yeah, we met two years ago and I just started my media campaign of announcing to the world that I was the person behind an Instagram account that went viral back in 2012. Yep. It was originally called uh, The Rich Kids of Instagram. Uh, then I got a letter from Instagram telling me that I had to change the name. So uh, <laughs> I changed the name to the Rich Kids of the Internet. Yeah. And yeah, I built a business off the back of it, helping basically find the impossible to find. That's my new... That's what you do, the impo- that, yeah. That is literally what I do. Um, so I find really difficult things to locate or source. So that can be watches, cars, jets, um, obviously I do the travel, and whatever it may be for these really wealthy people. And Amazing. That's it. So. Um, and before we jump onto that, today's podcast is actually sponsored by Elevate Insurance Brokers. They actually specialise in watches, luxury homes, cars over 75, 80k, nothing okay. below that. Um, so if you know anyone obviously needs good I insurance for their watches. And it's so funny that you mentioned insurance. The amount of people that have got these assets literally in a shoebox. Some of them actually have got <laughs> yeah. in a shoebox yeah. in their bed. Not insured at all. Not insured at all, particularly watches. Um, when the resale value of these watches are between 150 to 300 percent of the retail value within a year. Wow. Um, I mean, I had a. I was going to tell you this morning. So, uh, if anyone out there understands watches, you'll know the piece I'm referring to. There's currently a blue, Tiff, uh, they call it Tiffany blue. Yeah. Oyster Rolex, 41 millimeter. Two weeks ago, I sourced one for just under 19,000. Retail value of that was 4k. <laughs> Guess how much it's worth now? So Come two on. weeks. 26. More? Yeah. Come on. 45. You go on, what? You go on Chrono right now, the same watch is going between 44 and 45,000. Is it worth it? Or is that just a demand for the, is that just because there's a demand for it? Because I would never spend 46 grand on that watch. Yeah, of course. Like people, people buy what's relative to them. People can never imagine putting that amount of money onto their arm. And it is crazy to think that way, but if you look at it as an investment, and you know this, you're a property guy, you will never find a property where within 12 months you can more than treble your money. No, not in 12 months, unless it's an unbelievable deal, which there's not many of them, where yeah. a watch is accessible, right? You can buy a watch for 20, you, know, you can move a watch. You can go from country to country, it's international. Yeah, you can sell it. You don't it. need to live in it. And you, you don't, don't pay tax on it. you don't pay tax on it. Um, okay. Well, yeah, it's, it's absolutely exploding in terms of investment. People are looking at it now as an asset class, and. Just going back to the insurance, the need for insurance has never been so strong because, I mean, we've seen it on the news, we've seen celebrities, we've seen footballers. I think Ashley Cole got recently broke into and told that they were going to cut his thumbs off if they didn't hand over the watches. Oh, wow. Yeah, so um, insurance is very important. So if you need insurance, go jump over, go have a look at Elevate's website and go contact one of the guys. They're one of the founders. You'll find their name on the website. They are unbelievable. It's worth it. Every penny is worth it. 100%. Yeah, so go hit them up. So what have you been up to personally? So... We'll come back to all the watches and the good stuff and finding cars and whatnot and jets we'll talk about. Yeah. Um, what have you been up to? Because you've been training, Yeah. I, looking good, looking fit. I'm, I'm so, so happy, you know, like the pandemic was really, really stressful for a lot of people. And I think you either did one or the other. You either moped around and complained about it and spent your life in your underpants watching Netflix or you took it as an opportunity to reset. And that's what I did. Wow. Um, I completely reset. I gave up drinking. I got in the gym. I bought my, I don't know how I managed to time it, Nathan. I bought a gym literally in November, yeah. just before the pandemic. How did you? And I bought all the yoga mats. So I managed to basically kick myself out for like 1200 quid. The same stuff when the pandemic was happening was like three or four. Wow. Months. The same stuff. Amazing. So it's like you had a sixth sense for I, it. Yeah. Very freakishly predicted the future. I wish I knew next week's lottery numbers. But, yeah. But yeah. I don't. Um, so yeah, I got myself in the gym. I set a routine. I would train 45 minutes to an hour and a half every day. Yeah. And it just helped me working from home and resetting and just looking around and appreciating the little things that we could do before the pandemic more than ever. Yeah, true. Like traveling, like seeing and human contact. I know. It's scary how much time we spent on a computer talking to people virtually versus actually being in front of someone. That's true. Tell me about all, like, I can imagine, 
I've seen a lot of your posts and you're sourcing a lot of things and you put like, you know, people want jets and some of your posts were really funny the other day about what people's expectations of what they can afford and what they can buy when they say, yeah, I want to buy a Rolex Daytona and what their actual budget was, was a, a Tommy, Tommy, Tommy the Tank Engine, yeah. what, whatever. <laughs> like, tell me sort of some of the crazy things that you, the requests that you get and you think, why are you fucking wasting my time? Um, the reason I'm making that content is because the biggest issue I have in my business isn't actually finding the things that we find, it's finding the customer that's able to buy it. Mm, because yeah. everyone pretends to be something they're not, and everyone hides behind a keyboard, and everyone wants to be seen as a big dog. But, it, <laughs> but, it, but in reality, what can't speak can't lie, and unless someone's got the facility and ability to transact, they're just a time waster. Yeah. And my business and my career is built on commission. Yeah. complete conversion yeah. and I love what you said the other day about people getting out of a job and being self-employed yeah the fuck me running a business is fucking hard yeah it's really it hard it is so fucking stressful you have no idea if you're in a job right now and you don't enjoy it just be grateful that no matter how bad or good your day is you're still getting your fucking paycheck at the <laughs> yeah, end of the month yeah it's so like, true in, in my job I can go I can go two months I can even go six months without getting paid any wow commission, yeah. which is realistic it is realistic, yeah. and but that's, but the rewards are big, oh, yeah, right? The rewards are big, but you've still got to keep going. 24-7, 365, 3 a.m. in the morning, someone from bloody LA wants a, a Zoom call. You've got to take it. You've got to do wow. it. Wow. So um, in terms of going back to that, in terms of making the content, because I have a lot of time wasters, I've now decided to basically devote some content to them. Um, and showing the Instagram versus reality. Let's see, yeah. And the scary thing about it, the posts are getting so much engagement, so many people from the industry are coming forward and saying, oh my God, it's so good, you're actually highlighting this yeah. as, a, as a thing. Like, you know it, you have people come view houses or whatever it may be, and they just want to look around. They just want to have a, they want to have a photo. No, they do, they just, they literally just want to have a look. They do want to have a photo, they do want to be nosy. And there's just so many window shoppers out there and I, I get it all the time and people with watches and shit. It's just, it's I, so frustrating. I have no problem with people saying to me, hey, how much is that? No, of course. I have zero issue with that. Yeah, that's that's me messaging you saying, hey James, <laughs> can I get a private jet to Cairns please? Yeah, but I know you've got the good intention of it. You're interested in it and yep. it's something to aspire and aim for. The, the amount of people I've met over the years where they've come to me and they've, they've made their first bit of money. Yeah. And I've said to them, look, don't spend on this. Invest, come back in six months, a year's time. Yeah. And we can kick you out properly. That makes and sense. And you're not worried about the extra, Two thousand, three thousand pound more. You're gonna to have to spend on this because you'll you'll have that investment yeah. return. Um, but yeah, we just seem to attract a lot of people that want to find out just for the sake of finding out, and then treat me as if they're really, really successful, really, really rich. And honestly, I've always said this: my most wealthy, successful people have about a hundred followers on Instagram. They post <laughs> photos of their dogs. <laughs> yeah, they and do. They are so understated, and they never ever wear a watch. They don't have the handbag. They don't have whatever it is that's hot. Yeah. Um, and they don't look like an American rapper or from a music. Well, they have the no. They don't have the need to prove, like to 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 show, like, prove anything to anyone, right? Yeah. They don't need to. There's, yeah. there's no need for them to do that. They just they want to live their life. Yeah, they want to live their life. And don't don't get me wrong. Some of them do have egos. Every, there's always going to be an ego. Yeah. Um, but egos are dangerous. Egos what get you in trouble. Like in terms of financially overspending that sort of stuff because I see so many people that just cannot sustain a certain lifestyle that they're living and all of a sudden they get caught and they're in massive amounts of debt and they're like they can't even food to they can't even afford to go out for dinner like yeah. you know they're putting on their so, capital one so, cards sometimes you have to sometimes you have to address that you have to have that awkward conversation with these people though you have to say to them like look I appreciate that you've got a BMW um, five series on finance and you've got a Rolex that you're paying £280 a minute to some <laughs> godforsaken watchtrader.com um, finance deal but in my world you're not you're not my client no and I need people that are able to transact and spend tens hundreds of thousands of pounds with a bank transfer not come back to me with a Klarna deal yeah and the, 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 issue, the issue we've got is widespread it's in the media it's in the music videos the kids nowadays they have to have XYZ to feel like they are successful or, or, or of worth or, yeah or worthy to have a conversation with X person because they've got the trainers, they've got the bag. And I just think that's really sad. Yeah, it is sad. People, look, I mean, people, 
look at me during the day because I dress I dress so casually all the time. I never dress. You never see me wear anything loud apart from branded stuff during the day. And, pe and I don't wear. I, I hardly now wear a watch at the moment because yeah. And I'm, I'm just <laughs> finding that people just judge you straight away. Yeah. yeah. And all of a sudden the price goes up with everything. Oh, you've got an AP on. Oh, well, he can afford it. Yeah. No, absolutely. Fuck that. I'm getting. I wear my Casio mm -hmm. little Casio. You tell us the time, Nathan, it works. I'm, I'm just, I'm getting so used to How many to just... times do you go, what's the time, and you go? Check my phone, yeah. And the, the function of a watch now is, I mean, my clients look at it as an investment pieces, and I always tell people look at it to make money versus actually wear it. But people don't use it. And also within the watch world, people want to be something they're not. Fake watches are Everywhere. rife. Yeah, and Absolute, they're so good. They're so good. I've seen a couple, they're and so I've good. gone, oh, then they're like, it, if you know, you know. Mm -hmm. Like if you know watches, you know watches and you'll be able to spot it if the fine, fine detail. But if you don't, no one would ever know. No, and there's there's horrible stories of people going into shops and boutiques and they do a switch last second and they come out with a dud. Um, my, my big thing is weighing the watches. Some of them are that good. Mm. The only way you can actually know the difference is to weigh, weigh. them. Yeah. And okay. it could be Shout. something as silly as eight grams out. Wow. Nice. And Rolex would never ever make a watch or produce a watch that was off. Their they weights do. on the watches are on the site. Uh, you can they, double check. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's rife because again, there's so much demand there that people take opportunities to employ the guys in Shenzhen to make a good copy. I don't, but I also don't. I don't see a problem with fake watches as long as you own it and go. It's a copy. Yeah. I just love this watch. Oh God. Yeah. You know, like I have no. It's when people try to put it off as if it's a real watch and they go. This is real. Mm -hmm. Look at this, and it's not. And it's not. And it's like well, I've, I've, I've got I've got clients that fly private jets, and they have fake watches because of security reasons. Yeah, and it makes complete sense. I actually was talking to a client um, the other week who has actually gone out to Camden Market, bought himself a good eight, ten watches that are all completely naff, <laughs> and put them in a safe in yeah. his house because he knows if he gets broken into, just take them to that safe and say, "There you go, have them." Good shout, isn't it? Uh, he's also a guy that's not insured, so I will be referring him <laughs> uh, to your to your partner, to yeah. your sponsor in the podcast. No, really um, but this crazy thing about it, and Instagram is, again, completely rife with this, is there's people out there that are trying to kid themselves or something they're not, and people just generally go along with it. There's a guy on Instagram, I was having a conversation with my friends, um, he goes around central London, goes into Chanel, Dior, videoing really expensive watches at, at, that are like 100, 150,000, going to buy them, he has a fake like bracelet on that's made out of like porcelain glass. Oh shit! Um, and but but the crazy thing is, people engage in that, and you but always why? have to. Why they must be like you must be stupid to be looking at half of these Instagram accounts and be inspired by it. They're mm. not real. They are fake. It's because people just assume that as assume. Sorry, that uh, is power. True as power like oh they're really powerful because they've got that they're really successful they're really smart they're really good looking it's absolute f like cool. okay we'll bring it on to we'll bring this into my favorite topic dating tinder yeah. swindler right <laughs> you've seen it yeah, everyone knows the guy would not have got matched if he was in a coffee shop if his photos were in a coffee shop or, or in the not. park no nope. he's in a private jet so women fall for that straight up or people fall for he's that a straight high away. he's a high value man yeah straight across yeah is it tick or yeah, whatever it is but which he, do swipe yeah, yeah. Whatever, well, however the I've never, works. I've never had Tinder. Well, as someone that's completed Tinder twice, Nathan, <laughs> um, I have, I have uh, more than frequented that app. But no, it's 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 a pandemic. It's 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 completely everywhere that people assume that if you're in a nice hotel room, if you're in a nice car, if you're wearing a watch that may or may not be real, yeah. that you're a high value human being. But you always have to ask yourself, is it real? Yeah. How did they get that? Mm. That's my big thing. And, I don't know if it's me and my tainted view of the world, but I always have to ask myself is who paid for that? Mm, yeah. It's so bad to say, it's so bad to look at someone's profile or someone's content online, but. It's true, isn't it? Uh, that's, I think that's why people have to be, like, I, I don't know, that's why I try to be as transparent as possible with people. Be like, how do you actually make your money, Nathan? Mm. What do you actually do? I don't, you, I don't actually have any money. You, I'm not rich. Yeah, I see, I see you and you're working on your stories. You do some rants or some really good conversation, which is really good to hear. But then you also see you working. Yeah. You see me like 11 o'clock at night on my bloody laptop, yeah. my Spider-Man logo on my computer. <laughs> like I, I'm, I'm we're working. Grafting. Yeah, we're grafting, we're hustling. Yeah. These guys that are just constantly living in Dubai. How? <laughs> That now, remember, I think I got in a lot of trouble actually. I actually got a message from a Dubai tourism board when the pandemic first happened because I put up a story about how Dubai is basically 
a convention full of influencers and drug dealers. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they messaged me saying, please remove that because there's a lot of audience on this. I'm like, oh yeah, whatever. But it's true. Yeah, like, how, how do these guys do it? I can't stand that place. It's not for me. Sorry if anyone likes it, but it's, it's just... It's, it's a shame like because the, the locals of Dubai, the people that have, uh, are living there, and the culture is amazing. Really, yes. But it's been, again, tainted by fakes. Us lot. <laughs> Brit, Brits abroad singing Wonderwall at three o'clock in the morning. Exactly. But it has been tainted, and it, I went there the other day. It just came across as really tacky, and it's just like, come on, man. I'm, I've been going there since since 2000. The first time I went there, I was 17 years of age, so 2001. No, oh, bit younger, maybe 1999. And there was one building on Sheikh Zayed Road. There was well, that was literally all there was, and it was just a desert basically. And every year, and in fact, it just got worse. The buildings are beautiful. The the way that they do things is great, and it all looks stunning, and it's all clean, which is lovely, but. Yeah, unfortunately, people make a city. Mm. People do make a city. They really do. And look, at, I this is my favourite city in the world. I mean, I know you. Try it's, to it's, still out favorite, of it, it's still my favourite. It's still my favourite city. London, you can't beat London. The culture, the people, the vibe. Yeah, the traffic shit, but so what? Mm -hmm. Like everything, the food. The like, food is food every, We have everything here. It's the best city in the world. We have absolutely everything care. here. I don't care the only say. thing you haven't got, and we always say it because we're Brits, but hopefully global warming and our friends. Oh, what, the sun? <laughs> yeah, the sun. Like heat. Heat would be great. If you had heat and air conditioning, because yeah. when it goes over 20 degrees, we all have a meltdown. Yeah, yeah everything um, stops working. So actually, as long as Greta Thornburg can keep quiet, <laughs> we'll hopefully get some global warming <laughs> who here. Is the, who is this little shit? Uh, well, I mean, it's just amazing, isn't it? Because if I said to you, let's get an autistic person, put them on the world stage to control and influence politics. <laughs> You'd be like, what have you been drinking? Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, but it's true. And in some ways I kind of admire her, like that, but she is a marketing person. She's a marketing stunt yeah. that is amazing at getting whatever opinion is across. Um, Can't knock her. No. For, doing what, for achieving what she's achieved. No. I, I won't take that away from her. It's yeah. just absolute bullshit. Yeah. Move your shitty attitude. <laughs> don't, half of them don't know what they're fucking talking about. No. They really don't. Look. Uh, isn't it so good to see London back? Yeah. Like, to see people and back. And tourists back. It's amazing. Tourists. It's great. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just an interesting interesting time to be alive, I think. It's a great a time of, to be alive. A lot of people are, are forming their own opinions based on actual evidence now versus what they're just told. Yeah. We've all got access to the beautiful internet and we all can have our own little podium and say what we want. I think that's fantastic. It does can get, we say what we want though? Or do you think a lot of it's We can say what we want, whether or not anything happens. Yeah. <laughs> it's, no, it's another thing. Because they can push whatever you say or not. The algorithms on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube yeah. can definitely dictate what you say I and mean, they pick up all your words. One of the things that, uh, obviously I have a lot of international clients and the current situation in Russia and Ukraine is horrendous for both sides. Yeah. People are losing brothers, sisters, mums, dads, etc. Mm. It's awful. Um, but the propaganda behind it, and because we live in the 21st century, we now have more insight into that world. Yeah. How Russia and Ukraine are both posting photos of wars that have previously happened, mm -hmm. videos and photos of people that were wounded in 2009 and putting it on today's news. Isn't it? It's a bit scary, you Very know? Very scary. Because it's kind of like, well, what is actually happening over there? Obviously, just people are dying. That is, of course. I'm not making it up. No, no, no. But what is happening? Who is behind it? And we're only fed what we're fed, we're, right? We're, we're fed what they want us to see. Mm. That's all. I mean, they're not, we're not fed what we want to see or what needs to be yeah. seen or what's the, always the truth, mm. but we are fed what they want to show us. Yeah. It's te television, it's tell telling a vision. Yeah. It's not telling the news, it's mm -hmm. telling a vision. Um, so yeah, it's it's a shame. But yeah, Greta Thunberg can absolutely, <laughs> she can fucking do one. I love what you said the other day about, um, about vegans making, what is it, making our food theirs. But, but, oh yeah, this is meat. Yeah. Oh yeah, like sushi and fushi and mushi and whatever it is. Like they make, like why, why really, do you need to have a burger? Between you and me, that's a really good investment. You invest in Beyond Meat, that company over in LA, they yeah. are going, Really? Oh yeah, thank, thanks vegans for making my investment return better so I can go buy myself chicken. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I love that. That's a really I love nice that. Yeah, wagyu yeah. beef. Yeah. Cheers, thanks for that. Um, I, see, for me, that is going against what I, like if, if I get involved in a business, I want it to be, True, like I don't. I'm not a vegan. I don't. I don't believe in vegan. Like I get why some people are vegan. They can't have red meat or they can't have a meat, and for health reasons. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. But 
why are you a vegan for no reason at all? There are people in this world that would wish, dream of having a bit of chicken, a bit of beef, a bit of fish, mm -hmm. and you're going, oh, no, I want to get my veggie trainers and I want to be a vegan. <laughs> why? Because everyone else wants to be a vegan, because it's yeah, a fad. It's popular. And then what, in two years time, there's going to be something else. Mm -hmm. I just Trinitarian or something. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. But, you know, like I, I, the thing that gets me is the convenience factor, like how everything's being made into a drink. That's a bit scary. So you got things like Huel. Yeah. Where it's literally a drink. Oh, here's your five a day. Here's your vitamins. <laughs> it's very convenient, but I'm sorry, but nothing will ever replace food. No, it's right. I agree. We are animals. Yeah. We are. Sweet. And okay, there's a lot of processed food out there, and if you can eat organic and you can afford to eat organic, go Being for great. it. Yeah. But the idea of just getting everything from um, from convenience, bottle, yeah. I think Elon Musk. Well, I know he comes out with some weird and wonderful stuff, but he actually said one of his goals in life is to essentially make a pill where you can just eat it, consume it, and that's your daily allowance, nuts, all yeah. your food. Because he said so much time and money is wasted on eating, which yeah. is true. Yeah. But we're animals; you can't really How take many it to love. How many meals do you have a day? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I. Eat I have obviously the three basic ones, but then I easily consume about 4,000 calories a day. Is that because you're training a lot? Yeah, because well, right? I'm, I'm trying to put on some weight and I'm one of these people where my metabolism is higher than the Empire State Building. I just need food. Wow. I'm okay. always hungry, it's terrible. Well, that's, well, that's good, no? If you, and if you're eating well, it doesn't matter. And if yeah. you're training and having a sort of a balanced diet. Mm -hmm. it, but it's, uh, and just talking out loud here, I think it's really difficult to eat healthy because of how much it costs. Yeah, it is, it's, it's so, so silly that you can go into Tesco. When do you ever see fruit on offer? No, never. You never see buy one, get on fruit and bananas. It feels like <laughs> they don't want you to buy that. No, they don't. There's no education for you to go and buy. This is what I don't understand. Like, you can just... Let's go back to, oh no, vegans, they've pissed me off. Now you said vegans, it's wound me up. Like, they can just have really nice fruit, veg, like aubergines, whatever. There are so many beautiful fruits and veg out there. Why do you need to make it a burger? Because someone said to me, oh, the burgers taste like real burgers. They actually don't taste like real burgers at all. But why do you need it to taste like a burger? Why not just have the fucking burger? I'm sure in your life you do other things that are, I don't know, harm the environment. Or you wear a pair of leather shoes. Or you've had a pair of perfume or makeup or what else I've ever, that's affected I've an ever animal. I've told you about my, my awkward vegan question. No. You ever meet a vegan and they say to you, oh, don't use animal products. Don't use, just, okay, so do you use public transport? Do you have a car? Yeah, the word fossil fuel, fossil, <laughs> comes from dead animals. Just, just going to put that one out there. So if you know a vegan, please ask them that. Okay. Um, but it's true. It is so true what you're saying. And I think it's just because if they were just to constantly put their food onto a plate, they just end up looking like rabbits. So they have to be creative. Yeah. And the only way they can be creative by is by... Making, so trying to make real food. Exactly. Yeah. And, but it, yeah, okay. I'm not, just don't push your opinions on other people just let them decide what they want to do yeah i mean if someone asks you like what's that feel yeah. free to tell them yeah but don't be like oh you i hate you because you don't yeah you're an antichrist because you're eating a chicken what about these extension rebellion people did you see what they're doing to people's cars i haven't seen them, right the extension rebellion these um i know the, the movement these, yeah these eco warrior whoever these people are right they're going around now putting fake tickets on cars oh, and nice. on the ticket it says we're going to let your tires down nice and we're, they're letting people's tires down nice okay. what else are they doing cutting their brakes letting it so fucking dangerous that's a, cr that's a criminal offense it is but what are the police doing about it nothing because if, if i dragged one out from the road i get arrested yeah i get done for i think it's terrible i mean i mean when the when they first did it on the it was the m25 and there, there was awful circumstances where they glued themselves to the road and there was an ambulance there. Um, someone was actually dying in the back and they got out and said, look, we've got a seriously ill patient on board. Can yeah. you please move? Because I don't think they're going to make it. And the leader of Extinction Rebellion, and please fact check this because this has been on a lot of radio shows, said, if she dies, she dies. <laughs> now... I don't know about you, but that is really not how to get your message across. No, it's not. It's actually gone that far that people just hate them. They don't even care what they're talking no, about. No, no. And what they're talking about is it, it's valid. It, it's, it's, there's a there's a opinion to it, but it's not an extreme movement. No, and it, there's a way of doing it. Yeah. Not just you know educate people. 
yeah. you know, put something. Uh, uh, this is this is my issue with global warming. Is we, I think, in this country, we are making vast progress towards being carbon neutral and people being aware of the damage we actually cause. Yeah. However, what's the fucking point when, if we went carbon neutral, all those changes are going to be less than one percent of what China does? Is, oh my what's God, the point? Isn't it? No, what's the point? No point at all. If I if I see the Chinese, if I see America, if I see all the big countries doing what we're doing, yeah, fine, but. What's the point? We are a tiny, tiny cog in this massive engine of global warming. What about when uh, Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos or Richard Branson decide to put a rocket up in the air? Mm. How much? How much that gives off? Yeah, it's in. Apparently, it's the equivalent of a million people's carbon footprint for a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. insane. Yeah, for one. I see. I'm a bit but, weird like that. I can see that, but I can see the benefits of going to space. If you find out, like maybe there's a something. New, me- yeah. Could, got to be in it to win it right yeah but so. you know but you can't have one rule for one and run rule, rule for another i i get penalized and paying one pound whatever it is 90 or 80 or can't remember the price of diesel because mm. i've got a diesel car and i'm trying to get to work and make a living yeah. when these guys just want to put a rocket up in space yeah. and then go um buy my electric car yeah someone says to me interesting uh, regarding electric vehicles which completely escaped my mind which is very scary at the moment if you want to go to the shop you get in your car you turn the engine on yeah imagine if all the cars were electric and had robots and satellites in them and the government went you're not going to get your electric you're not going to the shops today <laughs> they could control it they'd know exactly where you were going they could they would be able to say no you're not doing that today it's so true isn't it do you I mean, think, I mean, do you think it could, could happen? It could happen, and maybe that's a way of moving forward, right? No, so like in the pandemic where they got everyone locked down, mm. they go, okay, turn off all the cars. Yeah. You cannot move. Yeah. You cannot drive anywhere. I mean, it would free up a lot of congestion, wouldn't it? Yeah, but they can't turn off our private planes, right? Oh, that's, <laughs> a, that's, a, that's a difficult one. That's a difficult one. I mean, I'm very fortunate to um, be. Let's get onto private planes. Yeah, private jets. Come on, private jets. Mm. You've been on one. Yeah, been on quite a few. Been very lucky. Um, <sighs> it is ama- it. it is amazing. You are going to do it. We, I know, we, but look, everyone <laughs> is doing it, and you will have to do selfie, Instagram live, whatever you have to do <laughs> while you're on the plane, just to prove that you joined the Mile High Club. I need to um, do it. Yeah, you need to you need to do that. Honestly, if you ever have the chance. Absolutely not. <laughs> if you ever have the chance, and you are very lucky and fortunate to do it, please go for it. it is some experience. That's it, and then I asked you the other day, I was like, what do your clients do? And it was the funny, because I thought of two things, which just shows the difference in levels that people are at, right? Because I said to um, James, I said, James, what do your clients do on the plane? Do they go to sleep, or do they party and sort of really enjoy the experience? And what did you say? They work. <laughs> they work, yeah. isn't it? Like, absolutely. People don't, people, very few people understand that the, at this level, their time, is everything yeah and these guys are making decisions that are changing a lot of lives yeah they decide to open a plant or close a plant either a lot of people are going to be be made redundant or a lot of people are going to have the opportunity to make incomes and pensions for the rest of their life absolutely so they have to focus and when i mean focus they are so drilled they are machines and in some ways i feel really sorry for them that they are literally being recorded and their diaries are so vigorous that if they are in the air they can't enjoy really what they're doing but for also for them it, it's like them taking an uber yeah it sounds really yeah, silly but it's just the norm That's, for them because it it's their it's their behavior it's their, and it's i love world. that and we we look at ourselves driving around in like nice cars and going to nice restaurants and there are millions of other people in the world thinking i wish i could do that yeah so it's all it's all relative, relative. yeah it is it's all it really relative. is I was amazed about how much you told me the Wi-Fi was. I told somebody about the Wi-Fi from London to New York, mm-hmm. and I was like, "It's this cost, this much," and they're like, yeah. "They thought I was lying." No, it's twenty k for Wi-Fi. Google it; it's everywhere. Turn the fucking thing off. <laughs> I'm chilling at the fuck out. The, wor- the worst thing about it, um, I've I've, just lo- I've been looking, <laughs> I've been lucky enough to be on one, and it's not even that great. <laughs> it's not. It's like bro- you know, it's like dial-up. It's oh like, my yeah, god! Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again. When time is money, that 20,000 expense, if you're able to work for six to 10 hours yeah. and you're able to make, I don't know, a couple of million quid, couple of million quid by the time you've landed. It's, it's negligible difference. Like you, yeah. you would just buy it anyway. Yeah, it's, re- it's relative. It wouldn't so. matter how much it costs. You need the Wi Fi on there. Mm-hmm. I love that. I what's, the, what's the most obscure thing somebody says asked you to find them? Like, what, what's Do you want to know my. my I, so 
we recorded just just over two years ago. Yeah. I've had the weirdest request of my career since then, cool. and I haven't told you this. And I've got the voice on my phone to prove it. Um, I had a house manager, so that's someone that look, looks after a house, or the staff members of a of a client. Message me, voice note actually. Um, we need some help. I need you to find a fifty to fifty five year old man to have an affair with the client's <laughs> wife. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. Like, generally, I sat there and I was like, fuck off, this is like a load of bollocks, like, wind up, whatever. So I, I phoned them and said, look, what are you on about? He said, well, Mr. X hasn't got a prenup in place and he wants to get rid of his wife because if he doesn't and he divorces her, it's not 10 million, it's hundreds of millions. Yeah. So I'm like, what the fuck? So what I do, I phone my client in America who's like a bit of a mentor to me and basically said, like, Mr. Y, I need your help. He was like, oh yeah, here you go. I'm like, what do you mean, here you go? He gave me a number for an agency based in Germany, mm. which specialise in relationship breakups. They hire actors, actresses, to follow that person around like a target. They get into their social circle, their restaurants they go to, the gym they go to, everything they can to stage a relationship. Wow. And if you think about it, it's not that ridiculous because if that person does get divorced, they could yeah. lose hundreds of, I mean, Abramovich, he lost two yachts to his ex-wife. Like yeah, oh, at that level, yeah, like it can it can be that. So yeah, that's the weirdest request. That's insane. <laughs> it's mad, isn't it? And the, wow. the crazy thing is, it's a business. There's actually a business out there that does that, and it starts at seven figures. I keep saying to everyone, right? No matter mad. what you want in, no matter what industry you're in, there's always a way to make money. Yeah, I don't care what. That is a incredible anyway, it's business. Like, it's, it's going back to the, the watches, people are willing to pay what they want to pay. Something is only worth that much. And if someone is willing to pay that, they will. People will do it. Yeah, people are nuts. I mean, some people. I've got quite a few. I've got a few nice just, watches. Just to conclude, I didn't do it. Genuinely, I didn't go. I didn't go through that <laughs> with our business. Uh, I haven't actually flown over to France to do the job myself either. Just to clarify, no um, judging. No, no, I haven't. I haven't <laughs> it's okay, seriously. James. Sorry. It's all right. I know we're in a safe place, but no, no, not today. <laughs> all right, fair enough. Um, but those those requests do happen. So that's um, insane. That's going in there, obviously, because yeah. you know, we're, not, we're not cutting any of this. No, this is, this I didn't is say any names. The, the person, <laughs> no, you didn't. the person's not going to see this. So I love it's fine. that, though. I love that. I think that's great. It's mad, I have someone 55 years of age. Yeah, 50 to 55 to have an affair. With my wife. Yep. Fucking hell. That's, horrendous. I can't believe it. That's horrendous. So what's next? So how? So what else have you got coming up? Going on? Are you sticking to just doing this? Is it? Is it yeah, something that you're? Um, I'm working. I think as I get older, I'm, I'm learning more about the clients and the issues that they have. And a lot of the issues they have are not actually really something that it sounds like a business. It's more life problems. Yeah. It's, oh shit, I've inherited this. Or I don't want to take on my dad's or my mum's company. Yeah. Or I want to marry this person, but I'm not sure. And I, I basically set up a almost like a consultancy role with that and helping them plan life. Nice. But for them, that is bigger than me finding them a watch. Yeah. Because if they make the wrong decision, as just going back to that previous topic, yeah. it could cost them their family. Wow. So that's what I'm doing. Um, I like that. Yeah, it's, it's about growing up a little bit. I'm getting closer to my client and the trust you have with these people of course, yeah. means that when it comes to me selling a watch or a holiday, it's a lot easier when yeah. they know that I looked after them and I actually give a fuck about them. That's true. It's actually being genuine and, and caring. It completely differentiates me from anyone else. I think that's why you come across as so well is because you genuinely, you're genuinely just like a very nice, honest guy. Like, I'm just James. And I also have to tell the truth because yeah. if you don't and you try and sell, like nothing it, worse. It, it, no, it, nothing worse. Like no one wants to be sold to. Yeah, and there's people like I've worked with that have taken me nearly two years to actually make any money out of. I've just been a good person and advised them and put them in a room with people or said, "Oh, go and talk to that person." But because I've got that two years of graft and yeah, honesty, relationship. Yeah, of course. Relationship is everything, and um, storytelling. Yeah. Someone said to me uh, to me the other month, and it's stuck in my head. Or is it? Facts tell, stories sell. Okay, nice. So if you list like, oh yeah, that watch is worth this much, it's white gold, whatever. Yeah. But then you tell the story of, I managed to get this really difficult watch to this gentleman on this side of the world, and now his collection's worth this amount of money, and he's really happy because no one else in that country's got that watch. Yeah. That story. That story. Yeah. It's yeah. Much, it's worth much more than. And yeah. that's what it. That for me is that that element of that area of my career is I want to help people make stories in their lives. Do you find that in the US they're better at building stories and relationships than we are here? Yeah. We're I, terrible. We are so bad here. This we country just shocking. reminds me so it's all transactional. Yeah. I meet people and I'm sure you at the time it's it's immediately from the day dot handshake. What can we do? Handshake. How what can I get from you? 
what, how can you help me? Fuck off. Like, Ramming it down your throat. They really are. It's so boring. You go to like, so I get some networking events because you're sort of going to network. Mm. I get that. But it's like, the first thing is like, hi, I'm this. I do this. What do you do? It's like, well, hi, I'm Nathan. I like Liverpool Football Club. I like motorbikes and cars and whatnot. What do you like doing? Yeah. I get none of that. No, everything's it's, a sell, everything's oh, a pitch. It's so funny, and the, the worst thing is, as well, I don't like this culture that we seem to have in this country of being pimped out. We get like thrown around, oh, this is this is Nathan, he'll get you a house, this is this, this is Yeah, that. we and are. Like, yeah, and it, you automatically want to do a good job because you've been introduced by another human that you yeah. might have had some relationship with, but you don't know the qualification of that lead. Don't even know them. You don't even know them, you no. have no idea. I don't fucking know. And like, are the amount of people that are phoning me up and like, oh yeah, James will sort you out, James will sort you out, and the amount of conversations, like, nothing ever closes. No, it's annoying. Nothing it's ever like, closes. And also, I like to meet people face to face. I met some a really nice guy called Matt the other night, I was introduced to him about, he's got a business set up, and it was him saying, I want to meet Nathan. Right. I want to get in front of someone, I suppose to on a Zoom call or a telephone call. And he came down and we got on really well. Mm-hmm. And we sort of wanted, you, from half an hour, we just chatted about personal stuff and we ended up wanting to do business. People, if that was a phone call. Yeah, people buy from humans. People, yeah. Human to human is the best type of business. Sim- I agree. Simple as like, we talk about it, but how many people actually do it? That's, that's the issue. And I, I think in this country, we're madly, madly, madly polite where yeah. it can get to the point where it's unbearable and I don't know about you Nathan I've met so many people the Mayfair Square that square if I meet someone in there I, I just know nothing's going to come from it because it's just money 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 what can you do for me what can I get out of you versus who is this person and it's a shame because I mean I suppose that's what um, members clubs like that is it the same sort of thing in members clubs um, it, de- it depends I think um, <laughs> That's a really, really good question because I, I have good experience and I have bad experience in members clubs. And there's a particular club in London that's very well known. Um, I in Bar- Barclay Square. <laughs> yeah, that's all I'm that particular. <laughs> and I, yeah. I've had some fantastic nights in there. Um, I've met some really interesting people, but I've also gone in there and just met Instagram fakes, people that wear fake watches and have got in there based on some sort of imaginary clout that they have. And, <laughs> <laughs> they just want you to buy them drinks all night and they wow. walk, they go to the bathroom and never return with the so they're not there to pay the bill. Come Happens on. all the time. Um, How do people live like that? I don't know. I don't know. Like it's, it's really it's, embarrassing. It's, it's really it's really it's really odd. And it's people see you as an invoice payer provider versus a human being. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, I mean we've, we're all humans. Everyone's got their pros and cons, and I think if you can understand someone's mindset, their history, their experience, you can tailor opportunities to them that help them, but help you in return. Yeah. And as long as you go in with an open book saying, "Hey, I want to sell you this because it's really this, really good," but obviously I'm getting commission for it. That's why I'm here. So at least you're open and honest, right? Have, yeah. Have an awkward conversation. How many people don't have the awkward conversation of how much money am I going to make? Because they haven't got those? the bollocks. No. They. That's the truth. They just yeah. don't have the bollocks to go. I'm doing this, but also just share the value of what you're trying to do. Like, mm. if it can change your life, there's no harm in that. No. Like, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna earn something from it. Yeah. Why not? We're all here. You know, everyone needs to earn a crust. And if you're open and honest about what you're doing and what you're getting, people will respect that. I have so much, so much respect for people that say, I don't really know. You know. Yeah. But I'll go away and I'll find, find out. out. Yeah. Or I'll ask someone that can. Or actually, I've never done this before. Mm-hmm. Because that's amazing. If someone says to me, I've never found, I've never sourced a jet. Okay, yeah. fantastic. I will help them because it's in my interest to help them succeed. Because if they succeed, I succeed. Yeah. Work together as a team. This teamwork thing, it, it, it's, it's, it's gone, it's gone. I think the last couple of years in terms of online, because everyone's so connected, everyone thinks they can do everything. Yeah. But you still need humans to make deals happen. Yeah, you you can't do it with a computer. No. You so, <laughs> yeah. Is it easy to actually charter, like, to find a private, get a private jet though? Is it easy for just me to call James? I need a private jet from here to here. Um, it would have been three years ago. Yeah. The private jet market is exploding, like absolutely exploding. People need convenience, and there's not enough fresh stock, so the uh, jet producers uh, have not been able to build the planes. Yeah. So you're getting planes now that are like thirty percent more list price. And it's like watches. It's the same thing, exactly the same problem with watches. In terms of convenience, there's so many brokers out there. There's so many people out there that can get you a jet. What price you're paying is a, is a completely different thing. Okay. So right. they all use um, two to three systems around the world, mm-hmm. which is basically like almost like an Airbnb. The differences between them and I would say myself is I'm very lucky that my clients own the jets. 
<laughs> no. So I literally can message them on WhatsApp and yeah. find out where the jet is, find out how much it's going to cost to be repositioned and pick up the clients. Um, on Christmas Day, I had a client stuck in Miami because obviously COVID is so rife over there at the moment. All the commercial pilots are coming down positive, oh so they don't let them fly. So if there's business going on, they can't get from A to B. So the charter market is exploding. So on Christmas Day, one of my clients phoned me up and said, need your help, James. I'm stuck in Miami. I need to go back to North Carolina. I am hosting the family for Christmas. Fuck, help me. My <laughs> wife is going to kill me. And I'm like, well, what do you want me to do? He's like, can you charter a jet? And I was like, on Christmas Eve? Really? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, all right, okay. <laughs> How much? And he goes, well, look, don't be ridiculous, but it's important. I was like, okay, fine. So a couple of WhatsApps within 45 minutes, we had a jet. I've got a photo on my phone, I'll show you. Wow. Um, and yeah, we saved Christmas. That's amazing. Me, me and the team saved Christmas. And so if, you uh, a, if you need a jet, guys, on Christmas Eve, trying to get back from yeah, the day. Yeah, if your, wife's, if your wife's gonna kill you because you're not there and the whole family's going around. Um, but the chances of that happening are like, I mean, that was amazing, but yeah. I've never done that before. What I, love, what I do love about you guys is that you actually don't sell yourselves. Like you never go, to. no, you never, you've n I've never seen a post, a share, and nothing to say, we're desperate for business. Yeah, I love we're, that. We're this, we're that. Like, I love that. I look, I, look, I look at some of the luxury brands and, and the guys out there, their marketing is so bad. So bad. So, so like, they use stock images of like, oh, of wow. bags. Like anyone wow. can Google Hermes like bag, bag and put it up. Yeah, of course. Like it's like selling a car that's not yours. It's it's, it, it's really well, that tacky. happens on Instagram all the time where people just post shit and say, "Look, I've just bought this, whatever." And it's oh, it happens to me. Someone uh, the, the best thing about watches you have one of like one or one of five like be a piece of a watch or whatever, yeah. and um, it'll go around WhatsApp, <laughs> and then you'll have, then you'll get someone come to me and go, "I've got this." I'm like, "Have you?" It's like, yeah, oh, it's, it's 135K, and I'm like, oh, really? Well, I've got it for 85,000. It's on my dining room table yeah. right now. <laughs> it's my watch. It's my watch. It's actually, <laughs> if you look at the hand, that's my hand. Oh, I love that. Oh, God. Um, you've got to appreciate it. Like, you've got to love the, the hustle and people willing to do anything. But I like winding people up on Instagram, though. Go on. Um, so my brother's bought a couple of watches in the past. Yep. He went to Geneva and bought an, a, a black ceramic AP. Nice. And I put it on my Instagram story. Oh, the open works one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, 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 not that. I'll show you a picture. It's on my it's on my stories in my archive. I think you might have liked it. It's um, chronograph AP Royal Oak forty two whatever it is black ceramic. I think at the time he paid eighty or ninety k for it. It's now worth half a million quid. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Have you got it? Have you got it? Have you got it? Have you got it? It's like, why do you care so much if I've got a watch or not? I've just posted. I didn't say anything. All it said in the video was Mr. Kida, which mm. is my brother's name as well. Right. And they all just assume I've bought this watch. Have you got it? But no, no, no. Why are people so obsessed on Instagram about people having shit? Because they see it as an opportunity to either get your money off you or sell the things you own. Dating. And Let's go to dating. Okay. I'm, I'm not talking, talking about watches. <laughs> we'll talk about the other highly issue Come asset on. of Why women. are you single? Come on, James. It's Good looking guy. I mean, I even got a message yesterday saying, who's James Ison? Yeah, but you didn't say that it was a dinner lady from like Doncaster, did you? <laughs> no, I didn't. Um, Come on. Honestly, I think dating is just a complete minefield and everyone, I think the pandemic has exasperated a lot of people's issues and yeah. self-consciousness and reliance on online artificial communication where people can post what they want, be whatever they want, and then people expect that to happen in real life. Mm -hmm. um, I saw a video the other day which really hit home, which was men are told how to treat women how to be a gentleman, how to open the door for someone, how to pay the bill. But they're not really told what to expect from a woman. However, the modern day woman is told what to expect from, from a guy. Mm. Pays for dinner, has to have this car, has to have this watch, has to go to this holiday. Have good jobs. But she's not taught how to treat a man. So when you want to find a partner, uh, my, my advice to you, I mean, I am, I am single, so it's a bit awkward, but uh, just be yourself go there with open book and if they don't like you for that fuck off like yeah. literally just don't bother there's, there's seven billion people on this planet and you're not going to attract everyone no and no matter how hard you try and there are going to be some people out there that have agendas that have a game plan that have what can you do for me like who, who pays for the first date meal uh, uh, I've personally always paid yeah um, but I think that's because I just, like, just, yeah. just I just I think it's, I think it's right um, Someone said to me, to me the other day, they were like, okay, 
it was whoever's idea it was to go on the date they should pay oh, well, now well, if you could get away with that what, yeah i mean i've i've had dates um before where it would come to the bill and someone said um you pay well, that's absolutely fine or we split but you never see me again oh wow yep wow 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 yeah 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 so I, I genuinely think on the first date the man should pay just because not because he's the man I just think because I just feel it's the right thing to do yeah right? and I also think like you don't need to do dinner for first dates no you don't anymore it's just you, casual you, drinks a, a, a coffee yeah. but my big thing with dating is it's so artificial and it's almost like step by step go to dinner and do this go uh, whatever you've got to live with each other and, and life is not about dinner life is not about going on holiday to dubai and going to the five <laughs> and like going to a charlie sloth like concert at 11 o'clock at night like it's not about that it's about like conversations having awkward conversation having the ability to be with someone when they've had a shit day yeah that's that's healthy that's a relationship um so my advice is if you can progress to that as soon as possible the dates the dinners the holiday they will happen yeah they will they don't need to happen first <laughs> no no they don't um, so yeah that's that's my that's my advice I, mean, I, I know somebody and the girl that he was dating she asked him to take her to paris literally yeah, on yeah. the second week they were dating oh, yeah. he's like i get that uh, i get that i get that oh when are you picking me up in the lambo when are you taking me on a jet Wow, like, wow, wow. When are you going to do this? When are you going to do that? And I wonder why she got Tinder Swindland. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, the, the, part, the part of me, I feel sorry for those girls in a way because they did get mentally abused but and they did lose They financial. went looking for it. But that's my that's my thing. So, and everyone was like, oh, these girls are so sad and so <laughs> sad and so sad. No, no one told them to go look for a guy with a jet. Yeah. Or with a fucking Richard Mille watch. Yeah. You went there because you knew you were going to go on a private jet, have some nice holidays, be looked after by a man. Yep. He fucked you. Mm -hmm. Literally. Yep. <laughs> and now you don't like it. So, and yep. I was, look, I tell you what, right? If that guy was in sales, he'd be amazing. Oh, yeah. Like, if that guy just, I mean, he's amazing at what he does. He's a great, he's earned. Life is sales. He's made millions. Yeah, life life is a big sell. You're, you're either selling a product or you're selling yourself. Like, you're selling something. You are. And, um, I mean, I, I can give you an example of a horror show. Um, so last year I went on a date with a girl. Um, and I've, I've warned you about this one. This is, this is that one. And uh, this particular girl, we're at the dinner, just got to the main course, her phone went. Now, I don't mind if your phone goes off at the table, because like, my phone will go off at the table. It's a little bit rude, whatever. But if it's a family member, of course, take the call. Emergency, yeah. It was her friend. <laughs> and her friend was um, a waitress at a, a restaurant, and basically she was phoning this girl up to say, oh, I've just been left a, a tip by this guy. He's given me 20 quid, and he's left his phone number on the receipt. I'm thinking, right. This girl, I've only known her for, what, like 40 minutes in person. I spoke to her online, and like she seemed okay, seemed nice. I was like, okay, let's go meet. Um, she said to her friend, oh, you got his phone number. Oh, you got his Instagram. Send me his Instagram and I will tell you if he's got money. No. That, those words came out of her mouth and I sat there, I'm like, what? And she goes, is he wearing a watch? Screenshot it, send it me and I'll tell you if it's an expensive watch. So literally, no, I sat there, I finished my food, I felt sick. I went over to the waiter, I paid it because I felt guilty and I left. Fucked off. Wow. Mate, honestly, they're everywhere. The, it's like I'm not talking about women in general. That's no, that's wrong no, to no, say. No. This is a, a niche. A specific, yeah, there are, there are a specific amount. There are these. There's a niche of women of where they just use you, literally use you for what they can get. The problem I have though is I think it's almost becoming acceptable and almost mainstream from music. You have people like Cardi B. Yeah. Uh, I don't know the exact lyric because I'm probably too white for this, but I think the lyric is something like "Broke ass boys don't get pussy" or something like that. <laughs> What does that like? What what does that educate females? <laughs> what does that what does that educate females though, Nate? Like, this, this is not something new, but like you said, it's now become more. It seems like it's become more acceptable because yeah. women have always gone. I mean, look, I would go back to my grandparents and parents where they say, "Well, what does he do for a living? Does he have money? How can he look after you?" So there's always been that sort of expectation to go with a man that's yeah. successful and done well. I get that. There's nothing. There's no harm in as aspiring to have a good life, right? Yeah. But for it to be so blatant and obvious and so in your face and just about money is fucking disgusting. Yeah. So it's like that. It's like that ad old age adjective of like, if a guy's got a hundred pounds in his bank and he gives you fifty pounds, 
Is he worth more or less than a guy that has a million pounds in his bank and gives you a hundred quid? Yeah. It's it's down to the person at the end of the day, and I, I just go back to it. Go Fake. go be yourself. Be the, an open book. Like, it's dating is dating is is, a, is almost a business deal. It's a minefield it's, at the moment. It, I it's, tell you, it's really really difficult, and I think. I'm kind That's of jealous. It, it, it is sad. I'm jealous of my like grandparents' age. Like my grandparents met at sixteen and dancing. The, the, yeah, dancing. And my granddad was actually the president of the Vespa Club. <laughs> was he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. True so story. He wasn't a mod. He was a nah, Vespa. He, he was, was a Vespa yeah. guy. Nice. Um, so that's how they met. But they're one. Well, my grandparents are 76, 77 now, and they they can't get their head around it either. They like, just I don't understand it. How everyone is trying to be all about me. Yeah. They say, it's all about me. What can you do for me? Not what I can do for you, or what we can do for to us. Hear that. Yeah, of course. Or for other people. Well, yeah. Good people help other people. I tried that so much, and I'll say it on here because I don't care, but um, I had the Yen Society, mm -hmm. and all of our seminars were free, 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 free. And somebody said, um, we want, I want to do a paid one. I said, okay, fine. And it just ruined it. Because now everyone's What was just, the topic? Um, uh, FX trading. That's why. It's, it, yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's just, it's, and, and I've now not done anything with the Inn Society until I'm going to give it a massive break, come back with some amazing free seminars again and go from there. But it's when people want to fucking pinch everything from everywhere. Yeah. I fucking hate it. Yeah. Like, so, like me, my, I, it doesn't cost anything to phone me or call me or for me to do a quote um, as long as you just don't take the piss. That's it. Don't if you don't take the piss, piss, just... I always call James for everything. I'm like, James, how much does this cost? He's like, <laughs> Nathan, it's like 100 grand. I'm like, okay, cheers, mate, I don't want it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, t I'll tell you what things cost. It's, it's it's not a problem, but when you tell me you are a, a serious business person, yeah, exactly. you've got this, you've got that, and oh, you know that. Oh, see, don't, that's just, you know, yeah, that's what you, that's what you said legs. to me yesterday. I say, oh, that's me. And he went, no, Jack, at least like you ask the question, how much is it? If you can afford it, you'll say, I can't afford it, or I yeah. can afford it. Yeah, like, or I'll say no this problem. is my budget. Is that possible? You like no uh, problem. No, no, and it's it's like going back to everything. It's the people trying to be something they're not. It's just really sad. I bet you see a lot of that though, because you're like heavily involved in social media. Right? Yeah, social media is just oh god. Wicked tool though. It's, it's such a, a good tool. I'm so grateful for it because it got me to where I am. Yeah. It, it opened the the gates to it, but I don't get any business out of it. It's not real. Wait, it's, it's not real. It's a communication tool that gives you a dopamine hit from someone liking and commenting on a post. Um, and uh, there's some really good influencers out there. People like, um, well, you know, I say he's an influencer, he's more of an, an entrepreneur now. It's Steve Bartlett from Dragon's Den. Yeah. Talks openly about how your diet is, is not just what you eat. It's, it's what you read, it's what absolutely. you see, it's what you engage in. Um, it's your mental health diet. It's, it's it? your mental, exactly that. It's your mental health diet. So. One of the best things I think Instagram allow you to do now is mute people. Yeah. Mute people's stories, mute people's posts. You don't have to necessarily look at it and don't have the awkward conversation of, oh, you unfollowed me. No. That's really good. <laughs> yeah, um, but... One of the best pieces of dating advice I can give to guys or girls um, is to mute the person you're trying to date because you don't worry and overthink what they're doing. Oh. Or if you see them at dinner, you don't, oh my, oh my God, they're on another date. You don't see it, so you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> and people have dating and relationships in real life, not online. Out of sight, out of mind, right? Exactly. And uh, it's a coping mechanism. Um, I mean, I've done that. It's helped me. Oh, I'm, I'm being open and honest about this. Um, one of the best dating tips that you can do, mute their social media. I can't, I can't help on a dating tip, but I can tell you, like, for the muting point of view, if, if someone's like, um, somebody told me the other day, he muted, on some, he muted, he, he muted somebody because their success or what looked like success was upsetting him yeah so he felt like he wasn't achieving something yeah so he muted it yeah um and he said it made him feel a lot better so if there's someone out there i've, that I've done that makes I've sense done that. i've done that all the time i mean the world that i work in is it's rammed in your face all the time luxury 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 yeah and you can look around and go i haven't got that i haven't done that deal i haven't got that client um i i, I don't know what that is or i can't get into that world yeah it doesn't make you feel good no um so but turn it off. That turn it either turn or turn, turn it off or accept that it's a glimpse of that person's life, and yeah. it can be artificial. It can be staged. They might not have actually closed that deal. No. The amount of people on, on LinkedIn's another one, where people say, "Oh, I did this, I did that," and they didn't. They didn't do that. They, they, like it comes out like later that that asset wasn't for sale or that transaction came from somewhere else. Really, people do this all the time. 
all the time. Real estate agents, yeah. no offense, are, no, no, I uh, are, are super prime guys. Yeah. They are rife for full it. Full of shit. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. full of shit. Oh, if I had a pound for every time I've heard when I've taken a client round somewhere, oh, we, we need to sell this because there's someone else interested. Fuck off. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. Cool. So the, the when I spoke to you two weeks ago and arranged this, like, where's viewing, that interested buy? Where's gone? the interested buy? You got, oh, where's, where's that come from? Like, magic. Oh, they're going to put an offer in, are they? We'll do it then. Cool. I'll see you in 48 hours when you haven't got an offer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and if, it go, if, it, if it goes, it goes. Yeah, exactly. Right. If it's meant to be, it's meant to be. It will happen. I love that. I think that's wicked. But yeah, real estate agents are absolutely full of shit. And people that want to buy real estate, oh, I get these messages. Oh, can you get me a deal? Can you get me a deal? No, absolutely not. I cannot get you a deal. I have no idea who you are. I've never spoke to you, never met you, don't know who you are. What have you ever message me saying, how you doing, Nate? Do you want to meet up for a coffee? <laughs> Nothing. Just, can you get me a deal? Fuck off. Yeah. Um, I think just something that I'd love for your listeners, viewers to, to take away from this. If you know someone that's running a business and it can be absolutely anything, it can be someone that cleans cars, someone that, I don't know, a carpenter, a seamstress, uh, a dance instructor, a yoga instructor, whatever it may be, go give them a hug, go ask them how they are, support them in any way shape or form that can be i saw something on the inside i posted on my story i know you'd like to um what is it when will smith slapped chris rock everyone liked commented put their opinion on it shared it whatever when rihanna announced she's pregnant everyone liked it commented whatever but when your friend is promoting their business asking for help yeah. whatever it may be you just magically disappeared yeah, yeah. Now, I've been very fortunate in my life that my account went viral. Like, it just went everywhere. We were exceptionally lucky, right place, right time. The world is not like that now. Yeah. We are so connected. We need other humans to help us. Running a business is really difficult. People are relying on it to fund their life, to put food on their table, pay their mortgage, whatever it may be. We've just come out of a global pandemic. We need help. So if you know someone that's running a business or starting a business or whatever it may be, go ask how they are. Yeah. Go ask how you can help. Like, comment, whatever it is they post. Mm -hmm. And uh, trust me, if you give out, you will receive plus more. 100%. But it costs nothing for them to do that either. Nothing. But uh, nothing I, at all. And, I, and I know why they don't do it. Go on. It's because they don't want you to succeed. Hmm. That, well, that, that is how it would come across because why wouldn't you help that person? Yep. Like, I, I've got, I keep my, fr I've got, a very few amount of friends. How many friends have you got? Two, three, max. I've right? got two. Yeah, right? Yeah. And they're my mates, like they're my, uh, what I call my best friends. One of them has never shared anything about what I do mm -hmm. and has never helped, but I know, but he's my mate for different reasons, okay? And then I've got two other friends which will do anything for my business. If I do post this, share this, do that, the rest of them, they don't give a shit. Yeah, they don't. They don't care. They don't if care. I... But they'll be the first people to give their opinion and talk bad about you if, if they've got any sort of agenda. 100% or when you do something really well or you succeed or you've got something. Oh, pull I you, know Nathan. Pull, pull you down. Yeah, yeah or yeah. yeah, oh, I know Nathan. Oh, Nathan, can we, can we, can we use your car? Can we yeah. borrow your 911? Nathan, oh, yeah. oh, you just got a new Ducati. Can, can you bring it up to take some photos? Yeah. Fuck off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Users. Your, your best friends will always be your superheroes, your Avengers in your back pocket. And I'm very lucky that one of my, one of my closest friends is a carpenter. And uh, <laughs> he actually works at Buckingham Palace. <laughs> yeah, it's a very cool story. He has no connection to the world of luxury, but he will like comment. He'll send me content that he thinks is interesting for me to post. <laughs> yeah. He hasn't got a clue what he's talking about, but I love that about him because I'm not an expert in wood or, or anything like that. But if I know someone and he's a carpenter, he's <laughs> straight he's a man. Yeah. And I just wish, and if someone, just one person does this, if you do that, you will be a better human being. 100%. Good people help other humans. Yep. And good right. shit happens to good people. Yeah. Eventually. Eventually. Not straight away, but it does. Right. Yeah. That's what it I does. said to people. Like, something happened to a friend of mine and he had some bad news. I said, trust me, that bad news, you'll look back at it and it's go. temporary. Yeah. Like. It doesn't rain all the time. No, it doesn't. And it doesn't matter. Like, you know, just keep working hard. Be a good person. Share. Help as many people as you can. And good shit will come back to you. Mm -hmm. You be a shy stone. Just look for the short wins all the time. It will never come to you. Yeah. It never. Yeah, there's little wins here, yeah. there, and everywhere, but that long-term success and whatever that might look, whether it's happiness for me, long-term happiness is like being able to just go to bed and sleep. I love being able to get into my bed, shut my eyes, and fall asleep, wake up, and be like, I want to smash Refresh, today. Yeah, you know, 
that's, so, that's your that, so if someone said what makes you happy or what will make you feel like you succeeded that yeah, is I think it's just peace of that peace of mind peace, absolutely just um, I love nice things in life don't get me wrong I love the little things because they're small little wins for me like you know as you go through life I buy a car or a watch or something else but I also think of it as an investment I don't think of it as oh my god look at me I've got mm-hmm. what I also think you know, it's a bit of fun, but also it's worth an investment and I can yeah. sell it and use it, whatever. I'm also thinking of the future, but for me, ha- pure happiness is about just having peace of mind at night, going to bed, sleeping well, wake up in the morning and be like, let's go. Yeah. I love that. I think if you can wake up every day and feel like you're alive versus feel like you're trapped, yeah, that is the ultimate feeling. Well, you ask, you ask a terminally ill person what they would love in the world and what would make them happy and it would be just to be healthy. Yeah. Um, anything in the world you can ask him he'd be able to yeah. one thing and it's, just, and it's crazy thing about it it's the same with people with money if you ask a billionaire yeah. what would truly make you happy most of them if they're, if they're a parent would say I would love to have seen my kids grow up Yeah. Um, some would say I would love not to work the routine I have yeah. um, and other people would actually say I would love it if people didn't know what I've got mm. so for me there's common themes there it's family is important number one money is not everything no. and freedom we're, we're con- being constrained and some people like we're like, wrong we need jobs you need stability you need a mortgage payment whatever it may be and it's a tool it's a tool to get you to that if you want it yeah but don't moan about it no. like, like we were talking about being self-employed like people have no idea what it's like to run a company they watch the apprentice and think that's it it's not even close not even fucking close. It's uh, it's really stressful, but for us, like, for, it gives me a buzz. Like, mm. I, I do find it stressful, of course I do, but I really enjoy that stress. I enjoy that stress. Same. Um, I don't, you know, it is stressful, but there are some people that don't enjoy the stress, but they all oh, want to run a business. You you don't want to run a business. You are not ready for it. No. Um, I get a buzz off that stress and like, shit, this is happening. I've got to find this deal and I've got to make this happen. And I've got 10 people calling me and it's like, I love yep. that. Yep. So we buzz. And the, the, the thing about running a business, you can only answer to yourself. Yeah. You are your product. You are your service. You are everything. You, your personal brand, it makes or breaks you. So when you're having a shit day, everything suffers around you. It does. But, all, and all, but also, the buck stops with you. Yeah. Like your business is shit because of you. Yep. You haven't done well because of you. Your results are based on your decision. Yeah, that's it. And if that's like glorifying a certain area of the business, not getting up on time, not going to that meeting, not being well presented, whatever it is. Being like, late. Being late. And don't, but you can't tell someone you're, be, like you said, Nathan, my train or whatever, I'm gonna be like five minutes late, but you said, oh God, I can't stand it, I'm really sorry. But that's fine, because I knew like, ages in advance it's the people that call you when they're supposed to be there i'm running five minutes late yeah i know you're late because you're not here Mm. at the time that we were don't be late yeah don't be late for a meeting if you're going to meet someone for the first time fucking be early i think see uh, this is an interest this topic's really interesting i'm reading a book at the moment um i'll see if i can get the the link for it. it's really good it literally cost me eight pounds and it's changed my life (laughs) uh from debris smith's it's all about being a, a top dog Okay. okay, and I love dogs. Um, there's a really cute one there. Uh, and it's all about basically bringing people to the same level as you. So when you are late, a lot of people say to you, oh, sorry, sorry, we're, I'm late. Or, or the other option is, oh, thanks for your time. Now, if you say thanks for your time, you're automatically giving that person recognition that their time is pretty much more valuable than yours. I personally don't think that's a good thing. I don't think that's healthy. Obviously, you apologise for being late, but what a better answer is, is to go in the room and say, I'm so glad we could do this, and unfortunately, I was late, but you know what? We're both going to do a really good job. See the difference in words I'm using? We're both coming together. We're both valuable. We're both top dogs, alpha dogs. (laughs) It makes people feel really important versus an apology. No one wants to hear an apology, really. (laughs) No, they don't. Um, But yeah, that's just one thing that I've learned over the years from being late and or OCD on time. I'm always 15 minutes early, but that can go the other way. People get really pissed off because they start panicking. Yeah, true. But then you don't don't go knocking on their door. I'm here, I'm early, you hang around, whatever. You prepare for your meeting, you sit in your car, you listen to Taylor Swift, whatever it is that gets you in the zone. Yeah. And uh, then you go and smash the meeting. My wife takes a piss at me all the time for being early. She's like, you've got an issue with time. I I was like, no, I just, I value my time mm-hmm. and I, what I don't like to do is stress about getting somewhere. Mm. Like I hate rushing. Mm. Like we're not, we're not, 
we're not rushing now. No, we're chilled. We're, we're chilled. Well, there was traffic. Yeah. But I know my meeting is in 40 minutes time mm. and I've got plenty of time to get there yeah. because I planned, said if we could do this at this time, worst things happen, mm -hmm. we've got plenty of time. Yeah, I think it's um, a real detriment to people's mental health to always be to the pinpoint, but you should always like respect that timetable. Yeah. And it's the art of respect. Sometimes you'll let it down, you'll be late, other times you'll exceed it. But it's, it's that healthy balance. Um, and again, just be respectful of your own time because you need to give yourself enough time to prepare, enough time to get in the right headspace to go and communicate effectively. There's nothing worse than when you meet someone and they're rushing through notes or they're setting up their laptop, that they, they, the PowerPoint's like gone off or they forgot to turn their phone off. Like there's nothing worse than that. No, Cause it's, it's like, you're not here to work. You're here to try and do a quick fix. Yep. And no one wants to be seen as the answer to a quick fix. No, agreed. James, it's been amazing to have Pleasure you back as always, on the podcast. My friend. Thank you very much. Guys, today we've had James Eisen, the man behind the rich kids of the internet. Uh, we've been sponsored by Elevate Insurance Brokers. They are amazing. So if you've got a watch, expensive car, household insurance, whatever you might need in terms of insurance brokers, they are the guys to go to. Once again, thank you very much. See you soon. Guys, more podcasts to come very shortly. Done. We're good. <laughs>